As another application in group theory, we're going to try to determine the irreducible representation of the vibrational modes in water. So as I have drawn out here again for water, we have the four symmetry elements, E, C2, sigma V, and sigma V prime. And I have my character table here, A1, A2, B1, B2. But there's an extra row here that I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you how to use this extra row that you'll see on the right-hand side of character tables and how that relates to vibrational modes and uh, which ones of them are IR or Raman active. Okay, so starting off, I need to get my reducible representation of the coordinates for these. So we can displace each atom in the X, Y, or Z direction. So these displacements, as I have them drawn here, can be represented by arrows, and we see what the effect of the various symmetry operations is on these uh, on these representations here, and see what and we're taking the trace of those to get our reducible representation. Okay, so E leaves everything unchanged, so there's nine uh, individual displacements, so that gives us a character of nine with respect to E. <clears throat> If I do C2, these three all move off their axis. These three all move. They switch places. Um, the x, the positive x becomes a minus x. Positive y becomes a minus y. Positive z stays the same. So this is minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that ends up being a total of minus 1 for C2. With sigma v, what we have is um, all three Z's stay in the plane, all three Y's stay in the plane, all three X's switch direction. So this is plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. 6 minus 3 gives us a character of 3. And sigma V prime, we have these three are going to move off axis, these three are going to move off axis, they'll be off diagonal. Uh, this Z is going to stay the same. Uh, this X is going to stay the same. This Y is going to switch. 1 plus 1 minus 1 gives us 1. Okay, we've got to determine the coefficients for all of these uh, various EREPs. So we have coefficient of A1 equals, from our previous formulas, 1 over 4. The order of the group is 4. That's from the sum of the squares of the EREPs, or the total number of symmetry operations. So our denominator is 4. 1 over 4 of 9 times 1 for A1, minus 1 times 1, plus 3 times 1, plus 1 times 1, equals 9 minus 8, 11, 12, divided by 4 is 3. So there's a th character of 3 for A1. A2... It's going to equal 1 fourth times 9 times 1 minus 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, minus 3 times minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. 9, 8, 5, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Okay, we have A of B1 equals 1 fourth. 9 times 1 is 9. Mi minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, 9, 10, 13, 12, divided by 4 is 3. Now by process of elimination, 3 plus 1 plus 3 is 7, so we should find 2 on the last one to add up to 9. Let's see if that's the case equals 1 fourth. 1 times 9 is 9. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 9, 10, 7, 8 divided by 4 equals what, just what we need, 2. Okay, so our irreducible representation is going to be 3a1 plus a2 plus 3 b1 plus 2b2. All right, that's all we would have done in uh, previous videos, but now let's take this one step further 
uh, to add in what we know about vibrations, rotations, and translations, and how to use this little corner over here inside of the character table. Okay, so our irreducible representation is a sum of three different things. Our irreducible representation for all of our displacements is a sum of translations plus rotations plus vibrations. <clears throat> okay, so what do we know about translations and rotations? Well, that's what this part of the character table comes in very handy is we can use these to determine what the reducible and irreducible representations of each of those are. So what we know is that the reducible representation of the translations is equal to wherever they have this X, Y, and Z located inside the character table, that's where the translations are. So the translation is Z is A1. So if we just displace in the Z direction, that's A1 plus displacing in the x direction, the whole molecule, is b1, plus b2 is the y direction. Or you could alternatively take all three of those and add them up and see what you get there. That would be 3 minus 1, 1, 1. So now we can take these three and subtract them out from this, or alternatively, we could have taken the reducible part and subtracted it out of this. Either way would have worked, either way would have given the same answer. And similarly, for rotations, we look where these Rx, Ry, and Rz are located in the table. So for the rotations, we're getting A2 is the Z rotation, rotating the molecule around Z. Rotating around Y is B1, plus rotating around X is B2. And the reducible representation of that, if I have it written down correctly, is 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. Same thing, we can subtract out A2, B1, and B2 from our irreducible, or we can subtract out 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 from our reducible. Either way gives the same answer. Okay, so if we subtract those things out, what does that leave us with in terms of our total answer for the vibrational? The vibrational is what is left over. So that is 2A1, subtract out one of the A1s from three to get two, subtract out this A2, from that A2, it's gone. The three B1s, subtract out two of them, plus B1. There's two B2, subtract out two of them, they're gone, and so the reducible, the reducible representation of our vibrations, if we subtracted these from that, would have been 3, 1, 3, 1. So that is our final answer for the reducible representation of our vibrations. Now let's see whether or not these are infrared or Raman active. So in order to be IR active, <clears throat> you have to have the same irrep as X, Y, or Z in the character table. So in this case, for C2V molecules, uh, vibrations which are A1, B1, or B2 will be IR active. Uh, vibrations which are A2 will not be IR active. And as far as Raman activity, those must have the same irrep as the product cases, x squared, y squared, z squared, xz, yz, or what's left? Uh, let's see, xz, yz, or xy. So in this case, you'll notice x squared, y squared, z squared in A1, xy in A2, xz in B1, and yz in B2. So there's at least one in every single column here for the C2V point group. So every vibration in C2V, no matter what irrep it is, is going to be, is going to have to be Raman active because it's going to follow one of these uh, particular uh, products there. So in this case, for our water molecule, what we have is A1 is the same as Z, B1 is the same as X. So we have all three normal modes are IR active 
And for Raman, A1 is x squared, that is fine. B1 is xz, so we have all three modes are Raman active. So now, without knowing anything about the molecule besides what symmetry it is and, and uh, what, what the geometry of the molecule is, we've already made, we've already made predictions about what its IR spectrum, spectrum and Raman spectrum will and will not have. We're expecting three distinct modes that are IR active, and we're just expecting three distinct modes that are Raman active. In other point groups, um, if there are many more EREPs, for example, in D2H, there are eight EREPs, so there's only three of the X, Y, and Z. So five of the EREPs for D2H are not going to be IR active, depending on how many of the vibrational modes are in those EREPs. So you can actually make very interesting claims about the spectrum of the, of the vibrational spectrum of molecules before we have ever done any kind of experiments or know anything else about the energy levels or any of the other behavior of this molecule, thanks to the power of symmetry and group theory.